In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a tea light heater that'll heat a medium sized room in your house for about 4 cents an hour, and that also doubles as an art piece for your living room. Now you may have seen a number of variations of these heaters before, and most of them work ok. However, if you're wanting to use them as a cost effective heat source in the long term, they do have a few problems. The very simplistic variations sit on top of a bread tin, and after a few hours the bread tin gets really hot, which can damage the furniture it's sitting on and also makes it cumbersome to change the candles when they go out. And they usually look pretty ugly, so you'll probably want to put them away when guests come over. The variation I'm going to show you today has one major difference. That is that it hangs off a stand, rather than sitting on top of a base. By suspending it in the air, the hot base never comes in contact with your furniture. This also allows you to adjust for different size candles, and spin the base around to make putting the candles in much easier. Another benefit of the adjustable base height is efficiency. By raising the base, you're able to minimise heat loss, and at the same time allow just enough oxygen in to keep the candles burning. And best of all, it looks great, which means you're more likely to leave it out on display, and therefore you'll use it more. So let's start by looking at how to make the heater component. The materials you'll need for this part is a 6 inch pot with its base, a smaller 5 inch pot, a length of chain, the one I have here has 11 links in it, and it doesn't matter how many links there are so long as it's an odd number. You'll need 14 nuts, half inch. You'll need 11 half inch washers. And you'll need a length of threaded rod, also half inch. Now the rod I have here is about 24 inches, but I'm going to need to cut it because I only need about 11 inches. The first step to do is to cut the threaded rod. I roughly need 11 inches, so I'll just mark it out with a pen, and then I'll cut it with the hacksaw. This can take a few minutes, so I'll just pause the camera while I go and do this. Ok, now that I've cut the rod to the right length, I just need to file down the edge, because after cutting it with a hacksaw it can end up being quite sharp, so I'll just quickly do this now. Ok, now it's time to start assembling your heater. First put two nuts on the end of the rod, roughly an inch from the end. The reason for putting two nuts on, is that when screwed in opposite directions the nuts become very tightly locked together. This will help to prevent all the pieces from coming loose when the whole thing is put together. Then place the last link in the chain over the end of the rod, followed by the other end, creating a loop. And last, add one more nut to the end to secure the chain. Now just twist the two bottom nuts together in different directions to make them lock together. Now it's time to add the pots. First take a washer and slide it over the end. Followed by the big pot. Then another washer, followed by another nut. It takes a while to spin the nut right down to the end, so I'll just turn the camera off for a moment. Ok, the nut's right down the end now, just make sure that it's nice and tight, then put another washer, followed by the small pot. Then put another washer, followed by two more nuts. Once again, the reason for putting an additional nut on is to create a tight lock on this side as well. And when they're both all the way down to the bottom, just make sure they're as tight as you can get them. I'm also just going to take the chain off to make it easier to handle while I put the rest of the nuts and washers on. Ok, now put another washer on, followed by another nut, and you want to do this 6 more times. And the reason you want all these nuts and washers is because you're trying to capture as much of the heat as you can. The metal stores the energy from the candles and then radiates it out to the pots. The more metal, the more heat. And when you're done, it should look like this. Then put one more nut on the end to lock them all in place. I'll now just put the chain back on. And now it's time to put the base on, the base that will act as a cradle for your candles. Now it's important to note that the pot base doesn't usually have a hole in it, so you will need to do this yourself. 
And finally, slide the base over the rod followed by your last washer and nut. And that's it. So let's now look at how to do the stand. Now the stand I have here is made up of miscellaneous parts I had lying around the house. However, it's important to know that you can make your stand out of pretty much anything. The only criteria is that it's stable and that it has an overhanging arm. This means you could use a mic stand, a lamp stand, a flower pot stand. You could even hang them off a shelf. The support section in this stand is made from the legs of a roadside sign, like this one. And all I did was cut the ends off using an angle grinder to make it smaller. The base is made of 42mm pine. The long part is 15 inches, and the shorter part is 9 inches. The two pieces of wood are joined together using a halving joint, whereby you cut out half the width of one piece of wood and half the width of the other so they fit together flush. And there's a link below this video for more information on how to do that. Then I drilled a hole through the small piece of wood for the cross section, positioning the hole just to the side of where the joint will be, and making sure not to go all the way through. And then for aesthetics, I just cut the corners off on a 45 degree angle using a mitre box like this one. And that's it! Now the candles I'm using in this heater are from IKEA, and they cost $4 for 100 candles. Each candle lasts for about 4 hours, which means if you're using 4 candles in one heater, it costs only 4 cents to run the heater for an hour. 